I don't know why, but a while ago this product came out without any major reaction. Maybe because it is designed for more professional use, but are you sure about that? Because in my opinion, this little guy will be the perfect and extremely important upgrade in the DJI ecosystem for professionals as well as for beginners. Stop that. Ok, but from the beginning. Almost two years ago DJI released the Ronin 4D with LiDAR rangefinder which turns any manual lens into an autofocus once. The same new feature a while later also gets DJI RS3 Pro. Now, like almost every such innovation, this device unlocked many new possibilities, especially for solo shooters. However, there were a few situations in which its performance was limited in some way. The first limitation was that in the Ronin RS3, unfortunately you couldn't use the rangefinder with the DJI transmission at the same time and with their full potential. And the second limitation was that if you wanted to use the rangefinder in a completely manual style without a gimbal, it was possible but in a limited way and you still needed a gimbal to calibrate the lenses. Now these limitations are gone and all thanks to this tiny little device. From now on you can finally use the rangefinder with RS3 along with the DJI transmission at the same time and take completely benefit of this excellent setup. And what's even more important, if you already have a DJI transmission system, you can finally use the rangefinder without a gimbal and enjoy an autofocus on almost any camera on the market with any lens, it doesn't matter if on a gimbal, on a Steadicam or even on a remote camera head, anywhere and without any technical limitations. But what is very important, this is a not standalone device and keep in mind that you need a DJI transmission to make it work, because the Hybrid monitor at this point becomes the brain of this whole system. I know that for many of you this will be a big downside because it's quite an expensive solution, but I will try to show you right away why this is something you may need and really worth buying. If you are using a manual prime lens or cine zoom and if you have ever had to give up a cool shot because you just didn't have a focus puller with you or even worse, it was with you but let's say not as fast and awesome, then this is definitely the gear for you. Of course, you can always say that a cheaper option would be some Sony camera with an arrow focus lens and in some ways, of course I agree, but it all depends on what kind of project you are working on. You know, sometimes there are projects where you just need to keep the focus in the center of the frame and then simple autofocus is all you need, but the more you get into professional cinematography, the more you use focus as one of the creative tools to tell the story and you know, sometimes precise focusing is even a kind of art. That's why, in my opinion, the LiDAR rangefinder is one of the best wireless follow focus system on the market and works perfectly in any focus control scenario. I mean, both situations that is a phenomenal completely manual wireless focus system as well as with relation to autofocus where it is also much better than the one we know even from Sony cameras for example. Here's why, in addition to many great options such as a focus tracking, object tracking, face detection, change tracking speed, you can switch between manual and autofocus mode using the AF button on the handle or you can just press and hold the front button and then you have manual priority over autofocus and vice versa. You don't have to press anything on the screen or in the camera menu, just one click and that's it. This is very useful when you are shooting a scene where you have both a dynamic action and a moment when you want to change focus very slowly. This is just brilliant, easy and extremely useful in all sorts of creative applications and you have the feeling that you are somehow connected to the rangefinder, you know, it's like you actually still have your focus assistant with you, but at the same time you decided when and where you keep the focus. Setup of all this is quite easy in both situations, that is the option with only the camera as well as the option with the gimbal. Let's start with the option with the camera itself. You need DJI focus monitor, DJI transmission and hybrid monitor with focus handle, a battery with a pit-up connector and of course rangefinder. The original one has a different mount and as you can see I slightly modified mine but about that in a moment. Connecting all this together is quite easy and it's hard to make a mistake here. You need to connect a dual USB-C connector for the rangefinder, a single USB-C for the focus motor, a limo style connector and short USB-C for the DJI transmission and a pit-up for the battery. And of course the HDMI or SDI signal from the camera. Now how you put it together is totally up to you, while here I would like to show you my way. 
First of all, rangefinder. I modified mine a bit, which means I basically removed the original mount and made my own from a piece of aluminium so that it fits under the mat box. I wanted to have a rangefinder as close to the front as possible so that either the mat box or the long lens would not block my sensor. What's interesting is that if you place the rangefinder upside down, then it has a problem with face detection, so keep that in mind. Another thing is the focus motor. Now, the only downside of this device is that it is not compatible with standard watch size, so you need to use special adapters, which you can easily find on the market, but if for some reason you have a problem to get it, then just take the tape and roll it around the original tube from the kit a few times. It's not a perfect solution, but it works quite well. The next thing is the transmitter. Here you have of course a lot of mounting options, but if you have a V-mode in your camera or a power supply plate in this style, then here a great option is a dedicated adapter from Tilta, so you can mount the transmitter directly to the camera and you put a battery on the back of the transmitter, so with one battery you can power everything and then you get a great and very clean setup. The next thing is of course the most important part, the cable hub which has mounting holes so you can mount it basically anywhere you want and what's more it is very lightweight so you can also use tape, a plastic tie or even some kind of velcro. Now of course a clean installation is the tricky part because you've got a lot of cables here. So try to find a place on the camera from which it will be easier for you to organize these cables in a clear way. After connecting all the cables, it's time for the last thing, which is the hybrid monitor, which is not only the receiver but also the interface of the whole system and what's phenomenal, if you already have to use it anyway, you can also use it as the main monitor. Now, in the review about DJI transmission, I mentioned it to you that the only interference I have noticed is when the receiver is too close to the transmitter. And in fact, there should be at least one meter of space between them, but so far I'm using it in this exact same configuration for almost a month and with absolutely no problem at all. Now, what about transmission latency? DJI confirms a delay of about 60 to 70 milliseconds and if it is a problem for you, then you can connect the camera with HDMI cable directly to monitor and then there is no delay at all, but if you have signal only through SDI, then you would have to use a signal converter, but I think this is totally unnecessary. Because this latency is so minimal that in my opinion, I repeat again, in my opinion, it is a delay that you can live with without any problem. And to be honest, I have never had a situation where it would be any kind of issue. In fact, I still need to test it on some kind of very dynamic sports competition or something similar, but for now it's totally okay. Besides, based on my experience, such a solution has definitely more benefits. You have no cables, it has phenomenal image quality, it's super bright so it's perfect even on sunny days, it's a receiver so if you want to quickly switch to remote focusing, you just take off the monitor and that's it. And last, you have the whole interface of the rangefinder system here. The only downside I had to deal with was the position for the focus handle. Now, in order to properly calibrate and use the LiDAR system, you need to use a focus handle, which you mount directly on the monitor, but working in this position, it's quite weird. And this is where you might need another adapter from Tilta. With this extension cable, you can mount the focus handle basically anywhere you want, and what's more, you get not only a great grip for the camera, but more importantly, you have the focus knob right under your finger. Now everything is ready, it's time to start calibration. As I mentioned, the hybrid monitor is also the brain of the whole system. It has all the options such as autofocus speed, focus mode, focus histogram, which is one of my favorite options, three lens calibration memory, and you can also see the image from the camera built into the range finder. Now, at the very beginning, if you want everything to work perfectly, the most important thing we need to do is to set the position of the range finder in relation to camera sensor. In most professional cameras, the exact position of the sensor is identified by a special marker so all you have to do is to measure and set this distance. The next thing is to calibrate the focus motor. It is also very easy and automatic because if the lens has a hard stop, 
then the focus mirror will find the points by itself. The last thing is to calibrate the lens focus range in two steps. That is, first you move away to about one meter from the object, then you have to manually find the perfect focus and press confirm, and then you move back four meters and do the same thing and you are basically done. Remember that you can add three lenses in the rangefinder's memory and then you don't need to calibrate the focus every time, but only calibrate the motor, so changing the lenses is very quickly. Exactly like the Ronin 4D and RS3, here you have two autofocus modes, a white and flex option. In the flex option, the LiDAR keeps the selected area in focus, while in the white option, it keeps the focus around the center, while it has face and people detection priority. At this point I would like to show you how easy it is to switch from the one-man band mode to the focus puller option. And here such a combo is simply phenomenal, because all you have to do is to give the high bright monitor and focus grip to your assistant. That is so simple and you don't even have to turn off the camera or monitor. Of course in this situation you still can use a different monitor or viewfinder, because in the DJI transmitter you have a clean output signal. What's more, remember that you can use another hybrid monitor in control mode with DJI transmission, so if you have a second such monitor, you basically don't have to do anything and you can control the focus in any possible way. Now it's time for the gimbal. As I mentioned before, RS3 in combination with DJI transmission and rangefinder had some limitations, which is that you can't use these two devices at the same time in their full functionality, because they both use the same USB-C port on the gimbal. Now with the use of Cable Hub this is finally possible without any limitations, but you may wonder why it is so important. And honestly it is more important than you'll think, because now the functionality of the Ronin RS3 with rangefinder and DJI transmitter is almost exactly the same as in the Ronin 4D. I mean a phenomenal video transmission, full remote control of the movements and camera settings, focus and object tracking and all at the same time. All you have to do is just select the object you want to track and that's it. You move the camera and the Ronin will take care of the frame and focus itself and honestly, sometimes it does even better than some of us. Something absolutely fantastic. This is in my opinion crazy important for more complicated shots, especially if you have a small crew, because it is like having a third hand or even more, you know, like having an extra crew member. The only downside is that you can't activate object tracking from the monitor and you have to do it by pressing a button in the Ronin, but I'm sure that the option from the monitor will come in the next update. Another small downside in this situation for some of us is that you need an extra power source between 12 and 17 volts to make everything work properly and unfortunately we don't have that in the Ronin RS3. In fact, you don't really have this problem when you use the Ronin in a more professional way, because then you always have a larger battery somewhere, but in a handheld situation you need an extra large battery. Here again, in my opinion, with the best solution comes ring grip from Tilta, in which you have special V-mount plate for extra large batteries and thanks to additional power output connectors you can power not only the gimbal, but also the camera monitor light and basically you can expand this set as you wish. Setup in this case looks almost identical to the handheld camera, but here we need to attach an extra one USB-C cable in order to communicate with RS3 and that's it, you are ready to shoot. Here, when it comes to a different operating mode, just like in previous situation, you can use such a setup as a solo operator, as well as with a focus puller. What's great about the one-man band option, here you can also use the hybrid monitor as the main monitor, and with an extension cable attach the original handle, so you have full control over the focus, and you can quickly switch between auto and manual focus. What's more, in the option with focus puller, it is also pure pleasure and I think anyone who has already worked with the LiDAR Focus histogram knows exactly what I am talking about. To be honest, to all professionals I can say that you should buy it right away and to all beginners I can say to seriously consider buying it and here's why. If you are going into the world of professionals or you are already working on professionals high budget projects, then this equipment is not expensive at all, even more so if you consider the price to what such a combination can give you. Now just look at the basic setup on a film set, camera, lens, wireless follow focus, monitor or viewfinder and of course wireless video transmitter, because the rest of your crew also needs to see what you are shooting. 
Now, DJI transmission combined with the rangefinder gives you all the same and even much more because what you get is all this in one totally compatible ecosystem with crazy range and crazy features. And what's more, you get LiDAR autofocus which is the most advanced autofocus system that exists and you will be really impressed with how perfectly it works. And now, I don't mean that you should fire your focus assistant and replace it with autofocus, but I think that even for many very experienced focus pullers, rangefinder with all those very helpful features will be an extremely valuable tool, thanks to which even extremely difficult shots will no longer be any kind of problem. The way in which you can easily use autofocus in combination with manual focus and above all, the fact that from now on you can use autofocus in a whole range of handheld cameras simply blows my mind. This is phenomenal and I can definitely say once again that DJI is still pushing their plan and giving us more and more tools so that we can spend more time on creative works because technical things are happening in an automatic way. In fact, LiDAR autofocus, object and face tracking are already maybe things that are starting to move somewhere on the edge of the old technology we know and some kind of AI. And yes, in a certain way it can replace someone in your team, but I think the idea of DJI is not to replace humans by machines, but more to create for you a virtual assistant who will make for you things that you can do. So in my opinion, instead of fearing a technology that somehow works better than we do, we need to learn how to use that technology and enjoy their full potential. Guys, that's all for today, I hope it was helpful for you. As always, thanks for so many nice comments and messages and see you in the next episode.